Lecture 12. The theme of our lecture is Robert Burns is a pioneer of the Romantic movement. Objectives of the lecture is to understand Robert Burns' position as the national poet of Scotland and his appeal to Romantic era audiences as a natural poet, an example of primitivism to identify characteristics of Romanticism in Burns' poetry. During the lecture, we are going to discuss the following questions. The first is Poet's life, the second is Robert Burns' poetry, and the last one is Burns' day. The son of a Scottish farmer, Robert Burns was born two miles south of Ayr in Alloway, South Ayrshire, Scotland, the eldest of the seven children of William Burns. He was born in a house built by his father, now the Burns Cottage Museum, where he lived until Easter 1766 when he was seven years old. William Burns sold the house and took the tenancy Mount Oliphant Farm, southwest of Alloway. Here Burns grew up in a poverty and a hardship, and the, the severe manual labor of the farm left its traces in a premature stoop and a weakened constitution. He had little regular schooling and got much of his education from his father, who taught his children reading, writing, arithmetic, geography and history, and also wrote for them a manual of Christian belief. After a few years of home education, Burns was sent to a Dalrymple Parish School during the summer of 1772. Robert Burns is a national poet of Scotland. Also, his poems are somewhat difficult to read because of the Scottish dialect. The dialect is one of the reasons Burns is a central pre-romantic figure. Long before the popularity of 20th-century multiculturalism, Burns preserved in his poetry the Scottish language, culture and heritage. Burns embodies the concept of romantic primitivism, and his poetry exemplifies the glorification of the common man, the individual educated by life in nature. By the age of 15, Burns was the principal laborer at Mount Oliphant during the harvest of 1774. He was assisted by Nellie Kilpatrick, who inspired his first attempt at poetry, Once I Loved a Bonnie Less. In the summer of 1775, he was sent to finish his education with a tutor at Kirkoswold, where he met Peggy Thompson, to whom he wrote two songs, Now Wesley Wins and A Dream I'd Lie. The Life of a Lover and Writer Jean Armour was the daughter of a stonemason in Ayrshire, where she met Robert Burns in 1784. When Jean fell pregnant, Burns was reluctant to marry her, but did apparently promise that he would stick by her. In September 1786, Jean gave birth to twins, but it was only after she had twins again in March 1788 that Burns married her. Jean bore Burns eight children and raised one by mistress, but only three survived into adulthood. She had a very good memory and an aptitude for quoting verse. Burns read almost all his work to her and admitted mm, benefiting from her judgment. After the death of her husband, whom she outlived by nearly 38 years, Jean lived a modest but comfortable life in their last family home in Dumfries. It's from this period only that portraits for her exist. In the years 1784 to 1788, Burns engaged in simultaneous illicit relationships that produced several illegitimate illegitimate children. In 1785, he fathered his first child, Elizabeth, born out of wedlock to his mother's servant, Elizabeth Payton, while at the same time he was courting Jean Armour. 
When Jean became pregnant, her father forbade uh, the two to get married, and Jean honored her father's wishes, at least temporarily. Engaged at Jean's rejection, uh, Burns began wooing Mary Campbell and considered running away with her to the Caribbean. However, Mary suddenly died, changing his plans. Admits the domestic hours in Burns' life in July 1786, he published his first major volume of verse poems chiefly in the Scottish dialect. Critics prized his work and its appeal uh, spanned different classes of Scottish society. With this sudden success, Burns decided to stay in Scotland, and that November he set out for Edinburgh to bask in the glory. Getting acquainted with the poetry of Robert Burns, we noted that the composition and style of his works are dominated by elements of folk poetry. He uses repetitions, refrains, beginnings, and etc., which are characteristic of folk songs, tales, and ballads. The mixing of different genres and the free combination of strings with different size and rhyme, the mixing uh, of uh, strings of different magic lands, all this was taken by uh, Burns from uh, folklore but creatively reworked and acquainted, therefore, in new strength, beauty, and value. The main themes uh, of his poetry are love and friendship, man and nature, clashes of personality and people with the public violence and evil. In his works, uh, the three spirit of the Scottish people lives. The patriotic spirit of national pride inspires Burns' poetry, and in the native song folklore, he finds an uh, inexhaustible source of poetic images, themes, and motifs. Burns name is associated with a special form of the stanza, which shortened fourth and six lines. And at the same time, all the stanzas of Burns are permanent with the melody of all Scottish poetry and music. Such scheme is known in medieval lyrics in particular, in provincial poetry, but since uh, the 11th century, its uh, popularity has faded. It remained in Scotland where it had been widely used to Burns, but is associated with his name and known as the Burns stanza, also its official name is the standard Gabby. It goes from the first works that brought fame to his verse in Scotland. Turning to a business, Burns befriended James Johnson, a fledgling music publisher, who asked him for help. The result was the Scots Musical Museum, a collection of traditional music of Scotland. Tired of uh, the urban life, Burns settled on a farm at uh, Ellisland in the summer of 1788 and finally married Jean Armour. The couple would ultimately have nine children, only three of whom survived. In 1791, however, Burns quite farming for good and moved his family to the nearby town of Dumfries. There, he accepted the position of excise officer, essentially a tax collector, and continued to write and uh, gather traditional Scottish songs. That year, he published Tam or Shanta, an autobiographical story which is now considered a masterpiece of narrative poetry. In 1793, he then contributed to publisher George Thompson a select collection of original Scottish airs of For the Voice. Uh, this work and the Scots Music Museum make up the bulk of Burns' uh, poems and folk songs, including the well-known piece Out Lang Syne, A Red Red Rose, and the Battle of Sherimbute Infancy. Burns' preface to the 240-page Kilmarnock poems, chiefly in the Scottish dialect, published in 1786, presents the author as one who lacked all the advantages of learned art and who, being unacquainted with the necessary requisites for commencing poet by rule, instead sings and the sentiments and the manners. He felt and saw in himself and his rustic compeers around him in his and their native language. The book, published in an edition of just over 600 copies, contained 44 poems in Scots and in English, including such substantial recent works as Scots Drink, The Two Dogs, uh, The Vision, and um, uh, The Court Saturday Night.
Burns was a man of a great intellectual energy and force of character who in a class-ridden society never found an environment in which he could fully exercise his personality. It may be argued that Scottish culture in his day was incapable of providing an intellectual background that could replace the Calvinism that Burns rejected. Burns perhaps exhibited his greatest poetic powers in his satires, uh, there is also a remarkable craftsmanship in his verse letters, which display a most adroit counterpointing of the colloquial and the formal. But it's by his so songs that Burns is best known, and it's his songs that have carried his reputation around the world. Burns wrote all his songs to known uh, tunes, sometimes writing several sets of words to the same ear in an uh, endeavor to found the most apt poem for a given melody. Many songs which it's clear from a variety of evidence must have been substantially written by Burns he never claimed as his. And certainly above the status of Robert Burns is a romantic poet is a consequence of his life and literary career preceding the publication of Wordsworth and Coleridge's lyrical ballads in 1798, a work commonly dipped uh, the genesis of what uh, has since become known as Romanticism. The um, indefinability of Romanticism is problematic when trying to define Burns' part in it. He sustained his literary career commencing in 1771, also not published until 1786, till his death only two years prior to the publication of Lyrical Ballads in 1796. This two-year uh, interval has resulted in the uh, marginalization of his work from romantic canons and criticism. In identifying the extent of Burns' influence on and uh, uh, comparability to the principles Wordsworth establishes in his uh, preface to lyrical ballads, I will show how Burns is uh, dissolve, dissolving the recognition as a romantic poet. Burns Night is uh, annually celebrated in Scotland or on or around January 25. The day also celebrates Burns' contribution to Scottish culture. His best known work is the Old Lang Sign. The Scottish flag is often displayed at Burns Night celebrations. It's known as the saltire and consists of a rectangular blue background with a thick white bars on a Diagonals. The diagonals form a cross that represents St. Andrew, the patron saint of Scotland. At Burns Night events, many men wear kilts and women may wear shawls, skirts or dresses made from their family tartan. A tartan was originally a woolen clothes <coughs> with a distinctive pattern made by using colors of weft and uh, warp when weaving. Particular patterns and combinations of colors were associated with different areas, clans and families. Tartan patterns are now printed on various materials. Many types of food are associated with Burns Night. Later years and deaths. In his final three years, Burns sympathized with the French Revolution abroad and radical reform at home, neither of which was popular with many of his neighbors and friends. Never in good health, he had several boats with illness, possibly attributed to a lifelong heart conditions. On the morning of July 21, 1796, Burns died in drum fires at age 37. The funeral took place on July 25. The same day his son Maxwell was born. A memorial edition of his poems was published to raise money for his wife and children. This is the end of our lecture. Conclusion Robert Burns was a poet of all forms. His poems, letters, songs accurately portray the life of Scotland of the 18th century. Burns has, or at least should have, earned acknowledgement as a romantic poet. Today, Burns' work is known and loved by many people. Lots of countries have translated Burns' work into their own languages.
Here, given the revision questions for self-checking. When was Robert Burns born? Where was Robert Burns born? When did Robert Burns publish poems uh, chiefly in the Scottish dialect? Whom did Robert Burns assist in editing the Scots Musical Museum? Whom did Robert Burns marry? Which poem did Robert Burns write in 1791? What was Robert Burns' post in 1789-1796? Here, given the glossary concerning our lecture. Here, given the literature for further reading.